let's keep going. We're going to do this a little bit quicker this time. We're going to do another YouTube thumbnail. This is the double exposure effect. So let's say we want to do a, you, we're working for somebody or us personally wants to post YouTube videos about doing uh, a tutorial in Photoshop. So this is a, for a tutorial video about doing double exposure effect. We're even going to do that effect ourselves to create the thumbnail. thought that would be kind of fun and neat to do. So opening up a fresh new template here. And we're going to use two photos for this. We're going to use our girl and we're going to use our hot air balloon and we're going to overlay those and use blending modes to create that double exposure effect. So let's go ahead and bring in our photos and we're going to right click and we are going to do what we've done in the past thumbnail and we're going to make sure it's a smart object. Make sure it's a smart object. I just right clicked smart object. I'm going to bring it in. So now we have maximum control over the resolution. It's not going to blur. Such an essential step that I used to not do and incorporated that into my workflow not long ago and it's been such a lifesaver when I need to make the photo bigger after I've made it smaller. So right now I'm just framing the photo, you know, just kind of seeing where I'd like to have it be. Since it's a smart object, I don't have to worry about, I can always make it bigger or smaller later. Same thing with this. Let's unlock it. Let's right click, convert to smart object. And let's, I'm just copying and pasting it in. And we can go ahead and press enter and bring her in. And I want to really zoom in on her a lot. I want the sky to be able to reach as far as it can, but it may not be able to reach all the way and get the size I like. That's okay, because we have a couple of really cool content aware tools that's gonna be able to fill and extend this photo over a little bit for us. So I might even do that just so we can practice some of those content aware tools. A little bit so just framing this and the guides are really helping me frame this too and I'm thinking about kind of her head and how it's divided and I'm just trying to think of where the type will go as well we're going to be having a three word phrase and we're also going to be having a Photoshop icon so I have to think about the type when I'm composing this because the type is the most important part of the thumbnail as much as the image grabs us the type is what sells the video so let's start to overlay these a little bit. I'm going to bring our hot air balloon on top. And this is how double exposure effect works. It's all about blending modes. So I'm going to be going up to my blending mode panel over here for the hot air balloon. And I'm going to cycle through these. And I already have the one in mind that I'm going to use. We're going to end up on screen. So you notice how screen gives that really cool kind of vibe to it. And I want to bring this in even further. So let's kind of arrange this how we like it. We're seeing the hot air balloon and the curl. Let's also select both of these layers and let's bring it in a little bit more. I want a tighter shot. I want to have a little bit more of an emotional connection with the girl. So just trying to see where I can arrange this to make it slightly bigger. And so now what we want to do is we don't need all this excess white. We want to see a little bit more of the sky background. So I am selecting our hot air balloon and we're going to do a layering mask adding a layering mask and I'm going to paint on we want to remove so we want to paint on with a soft round brush let's make it nice and big nice and big maybe 300 and we're going to paint on with black so this is going to remove anything maybe a little bit bigger maybe 400 we're just going to slowly eliminate make sure my opacity is on 100% and we're just kind of bringing out more of the sky in certain areas Just like that. And if we mess up and we overdo it, it's not a big deal because we can switch back to white and go in and bring it back. So it's a combination of flipping between white and black and going back and forth. And this is exactly why we're using smart objects because now I want to reduce, I really want to show more of the balloon and the girl. I want to have the top of the balloon being shown. So now we have that's no big deal because we can scale this down without an issue. So I'm just going to kind of crop this a little bit differently. And sometimes photos don't stretch nicely all the way like this one does. This has a nice big background to work with. Sometimes, and I'm going to cut this a little bit for you. Be cutting this background image. We're going to pretend that this image did not stretch all the way and we need to somehow stretch it across. What I used to do is duplicate the background and reflect it and bump it up there to kind of get a kind of seamless look, but that's not always practical. Now that we have content aware tools, it makes it a lot easier. So I'm just going to draw a box here, have my background selected. 
I'm going to do some content aware fill. I'm going up to edit. I'm going to go to content aware fill. So edit content aware fill. It's going to ask us where we want to sample this to basically replicate. It's going to duplicate. It's going to sample what's in green and it's going to duplicate it in the white. Of course, we can erase certain parts if we don't want a certain cloud to get in the way or we don't want the cloud to be sampled. We can always brush that away. Click on OK. And it's going to automatically populate with what it thinks. It's going to sample some of that area and create the sky just like that. As you can see, content aware and content fill tools are not perfect. You can see this little kind of distorted look and we can easily patch that up a couple ways. I have our object selected. When you do the clone tool, so I have the clone tool that I can sample and clone, or I can do the spot healing brush tool and paint it on. The problem with that and having smart layers is when you have smart layers on, it doesn't allow you to do this. It doesn't allow you to edit the layer directly because it's still a smart object. So you'll have to right click and you will have to rasterize the layer. So I already did that. So I rasterized the layer. Now it's just any old photo that we can edit and do. So that's one limitation to smart layers when you start to get into the editing phase. So we could do the clone tool and just click a sample and clone it out and clone it out. Or you could do the spot healing brush tool which is right up here, spot healing brush tool. And you can do it that way too. But I usually find more control with the clone tool with things like that. So I can clone the top of the thing and just click on that and doesn't look like we did anything does it let's zoom out it's time to add typography i feel pretty good about the background image so we have that um, top balloon layer he's on screen just to kind of review and we did the double exposure effect so i went ahead and preloaded some sample text all these are on different lines so that we can have maximum control over how we arrange the type so let's try to figure out where would what would be a good size for the type. Let's make everything slightly bigger. We also want to make room for a Photoshop icon somewhere down there. So let's arrange it. Instead of trying to do the layered look and get all crazy, this is really the focal point of the photo. So we want to keep the type and the photo close, but we don't want to have it all interfere. So let's have a nice clean look with this. Let's have a more traditional look with this as well. The last one was this very bold, thick, sans serif typeface. Let's go for a more elegant serif typeface and I have one kind of in mind that I want to try out. So I'm going to double click on this and see if I can't get a Brill fat face. So I could just type it in A B R. There it is. This is another Adobe typeface but there's also several alternatives on Google Fonts if you don't have access to the subscription uh, of the Adobe Fonts which you get for free with any Adobe uh, Creative Cloud subscription. Of course, you can use character styles to quickly style these, but since there's only three, I'm just going to manually do all three. So how are we going to find, we want to fit these together like a puzzle piece. So let's find a nice arrangement. So you have these double Fs going on here. So I wonder if we could tuck that into this little open area. And so you notice I'm not doing it too tight and I'm not having these big gaps. So if I were to have, I see a lot of students do this. They'll have big gaps, but it doesn't feel very connected as a unified phrase. So we want to make sure we close the gap a little bit. Just finding ways to align things and tuck things in and see if that works. We want to have some spacing, but not so much that it doesn't seem like one unit. So let's bring this whole unit over and find a nice arrangement. And we can even bring this, since this doesn't have anything that goes beyond the baseline, so that's your baseline, anything that dips below. So this is your baseline, you have the P that dips below, but you don't have that in, these, in the double. So we can feel free to move that in any position we'd like. We can do kind of a stacked arrangement like that. And go ahead and do our visibility test, zoom out to 50%. Can I read it? You know, do I need to kind of nudge things up just a little bit? I'm using my arrow keys to slightly nudge things left and right. I just find it to be easier to use my arrow keys for just doing very small movements. And notice we're not using the grid yet. That's okay. We're going to use the grid a lot, but when it comes to these type of thumbnails, you know, the grid is great to use, but it takes a lot of time and, and you got to really 
formulate that. So I, sometimes it's nice to eyeball specific designs and some the grid will really come in handy. So let's add a slight drop shadow here. Just adding that slight drop shadow to add a little bit of depth. And now we need one more element to make this complete and we're done with our thumbnail. So we need a little Photoshop icon. So let's get our, let's go back to view. Let's make sure our extras are showing. Let's drag our, make sure our margin layer is on the top. So we just get an idea of, is, is anything outside of it? Can we kind of tweak everything? And we can also be able to find a nice placement for our Photoshop icon. So I'm going to bring in a PNG I found on Google, just the kind of your standard Creative Commons PNG uh, Photoshop icon. And sometimes you might find it with a white background, but you're an intermediate designer. You can punch out that white background and find this icon. No problem finding these icons. They're everywhere. So I'm just going to toggle him on and we're going to find the right placement. Our margins are really going to help us guide the placement for our icon. So now we can toggle off margins. Okay, so that's a nice placement. Margins kind of helped us figure that out. I'd love to do a really dramatic drop shadow with the icon. So let's go ahead and do drop shadow and kind of see what we can do here. I am going to do a very wide distance. So it looks like it's cast far onto the background. And I'm going to do a little bit of a blur here with size. And once again, my opacity is not super strong because that doesn't look very good. But when you reduce it, it kind of gives it a more realistic look. Click on OK. So we have that nice look of uh, kind of a far casted faded shadow for the icon. And we are essentially done with this one much quicker than the first one. So we were able to do that uh, very quickly. So let's do one more visibility test before we export. There it is. Let's go ahead and practice exporting and we can move on to the next project. So we're just going to go to File, Export. I'm going to do an Export As. And so this is a new way. This is 2019 and I believe 2020. 2020 version of Photoshop also has, I mean, I'm using 2020, but I believe it also did this for the 2019 version. If you don't see these export file settings the same way, you still have the same options. It's just arranged or looks a little bit different. You get a nice preview this time where older versions of Photoshop did not give you a really nice preview. So this is nice. We can preview, make sure we don't have anything on the sides going off. And we can go ahead and check on the sizes. Everything looks really good. And we want to do a JPEG. So we're going to go up here to File Settings. We want to do a JPEG. And make sure the quality is 100% because YouTube will always downsize it for us if they need to. We're just going to go to Export. And all this is, of course, everything we do in this class is going to be in RGB mode. Um, so all the templates that I supply and all the new documents we'll create are all going to be in RGB mode. So we just need to make sure it's RGB. Click on Export. And there are our YouTube thumbnails that were created. Within about 45 minutes, we're able to whip up a couple of different versions of these thumbnails. So hopefully you'll get fast and quick enough to be able to whip together something that looks this finished in about 20 minutes. That's how long you want to shoot for to do a really high quality YouTube thumbnail with images that are already supplied to you. You want to be able to create that quickly and efficiently so you can charge um, your money and make as much money as possible or create as much content um, as possible, but also keep the quality high. So we got to kind of study YouTube thumbnails a little bit. So next we're going to put together an entire social media and digital marketing campaign. So this is going to include um, Instagram, Facebook. We're also going to be doing display ads as well. So we're going to have this unified campaign. This is based on real client projects that I did I had a client for over 10 years and I did all of their social media and digital marketing items. And this is exactly the type of stuff we would do. It's based on a real client uh, work that I've done in the last 10 years. So we're going to be hopping into that next.